Welcome back again ladies and gents. Thanks for watching and subscribing. Today we're going to be taking the tank, the air box, everything off to install the block off plates so we can get accurate air to fuel ratio for our dyno readings. This is also a good procedure if you want to change your spark plugs, your air filter, your coal packs, anything that's below the tank in the air box. So pay attention if you ever plan on doing the maintenance for those. So let's get started. First we're going to take off the top caps and the side pieces on the plastic here. Okay, here's one side. Set this over here. And we'll do the other side. Pretty straightforward and easy to take all this off as many times as I've been behind all the plastics now it's really uh, really easy I'll also show you guys how I managed to get the tack signal without going all the way to the coal pack uh, I was able to make a shortcut by tracing the wiring back and I actually went by the ER6N service manual since I've not been able to find one for the Z just yet. This piece here you may be able to work it loose. Just yeah, just pull right on it, grip thumb and index, pull it right out. That's the trim ring for your key. Uh, you don't necessarily have to take that out, but I found the last time that I had it out, putting it back on, it wants to hit right here along the uh, ignition cylinder. Already, yeah, got a crazy extension on this one, huh? Now there is a plastic and a stainless washer behind the top too. Um, you got a plastic washer that goes against the plastic piece here and then the stainless next to the bowl. Fumble. You just gotta wiggle the sides here just a little bit. It's got a compression nut here. It's got the little rubber sleeve and it's it sometimes sticks in there. But all right, that gets us to the top part here where we can get to the top tank bolts. But first, we need to remove the side plastic, which is easy. That's also four millimeter, and also in the neon light install video. Very simple to take off. Um, I believe I want to pop the seat off. Okay. Now, I ran my neons on the inside of this, so what I'm probably going to have to do is be a little creative about taking it off and maybe just letting it hang temporarily. I'll pop it back in myself. But first, pop it. Just 
pops right off. And I'm just going to let it hang against the body there because like I said earlier, I have ran all of my neon lights, my accent lighting, right all right. But there's enough light on the video. Got a lot of light above, but there's a lot of daylight spilling in. Maybe you're ruining me a little bit. Okay. Fuse box is attached to this piece. We have to be careful. If I remember, don't think I took this one all the way. Because of the fuse box. There we go. There we go. Pop it right off. There we go. And I also zip tied my power wire for my lights across through here. So we'll have to remove that as well. No problem. All right, now I just removed the vent line here, and I took my power wire loose, clipped my wire ties. So next, I'm going to take this seat mounting bracket off so I can get to the two bolts holding the rear of the tank, and also the top holding the front of the tank. And they have marks where they look like they've been torqued down. So that's probably going to be important. I'll figure out what specs are on that. And we'll deal with it when we get back to the reassembly. Wow. Kind of scary how tight that was. Now that one's loose. Okay, now they also have these little bendy wire tie thingies on them. You can smell that I have the vent line open. Okay, did not like that that felt cross threaded. That's no bueno. I'm going to pop the vent back on just a little bit. Starting to smell just a little bit of fuel. Alrighty. Now for the tank. Not bad. Okay. Okay, now you see that washer has to come out it's an expansion and the front is a little different. It's just a bolt with a washer. Now, that top's ready, back's ready. Okay, I think I may be ready to take the tank off if I can get to Oh yeah, she's ready to come off. I just have to get the cabling loose from underneath, which is going to be interesting. So I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver and try to pop the brackets. Now, let me get you a better angle where you can see what I have to do here. All right, guys. I hope the autofocus doesn't go crazy. The manual's not going to cooperate with me. The lighting's kicking my butt. So what I've got here is the fuel line. There is this main fuel line here. And then we've got the fuel line.
fuel pump. Which seems to be connected behind here. Okay. All right. Where are we going to take this off to? Just trying to find a better way to get to my fuel pump to disconnect that. And it looks like it is right here. Let's see if we can see that. It is right here. This is where the fuel pump connects to the tank. So we can just unplug this. Should be able to push the tab and then pull it. pull out and there's that this is your fuel pump power don't mind these like I said that's my neons they're a little aggravating the way I routed them now that uh, I have to take the tank off but I'll deal with it okay so I've got that this vent line it looks to be one more bottom side which is this little bad boy here vent tube of some kind. Let's see if I can get it. It's connected the same way with a little clip. So we can get to it. This is going to be interesting. I don't know if there's any slack. There it is. Okay, so what I'll do is I will get my fuel main fuel line disconnected and then just pick up on the tank to get to the other. See, not bad at all. Right there it is. That just pulled right off. Here's the fuel line. Oh. A little red clip. Fuel pulls right out. Ouch. Bar in the mirror to the ear. And I believe we're free. Cool. I'm going to set this over here in the floor out of the way. And I'll set you guys back up so we can look at the rest. Alrighty, now we have the tank removed. Now we've got to look at getting the air box out. I can see the pairing valve. Okay, so we have a few clips here. We need to remove that one. We've got to unplug the main ECU. And let's see what else. Mm -hmm. There. Okay. We'll take that loose. Okay, eight millimeter. Takes this off. Okay. And get the ECU unplugged. There's our ACU. There. Okay. So now I've got a little bit of play with the wiring harness. I'm going to take the top of the air box off so we can remove it. Alrighty. Back in business. You know, guys, how much I love my impact. Lots of little screws. Lots of little Phillips. Okay. 
And really guys, there's nothing that's that difficult with doing this, so don't be intimidated. I know you're like, oh my god, that's a lot of bolts coming out of here. And yep, you're right, it is. It's a ton. But, hey. The wiring harness is snapped into the bottom corner of the airbox. There. Tell it. Over engineered. Yay. Okay, there's that. Top. Hey, look at there, it's all your finger tight. All right. Loosen that way up. So yeah, about a three millimeter. And you don't need a long T-handle to get to it, surprisingly. Okay, there's one side. Here's the other side. God, I hope I'm still recording. Got too much crap in the way. I would love to have done this at the shop, but I said in another video recently that we have so much crap. Let me restart. Now we're good. I've got so much crap, we've been doing insane amounts of renovations for this certain company. If anyone follows my Twitter, you might uh, have seen me post a picture of a jet engine. Okay, there is a rubber tube here that needs to be pulled off on the bottom. Should be able to reach under easily. It's coming. There it went. There's one on the back, and there's one here to the side. Alright, now we've got our coal packs exposed, our plugs, so that looks like it's going to be my 8mm. And I have air wrench. Okay, be careful not to drop anything down in your butterflies here. If you have a rag, stuff one in there. And I do, and I'm going to follow my own advice. Something there. You ready? Yeah, eight millimeter. It's a fun little fit because there's a wire clip on it, and it just popped right loose and immediately went finger finger tight. Okay. There's the bolt for that. Make sure we don't lose that. Now, if you see the coal packs there, I was able to splice into this wire loom and get to the black and orange wire. And then we took off the rectifier over here for the charging system. And I was able to get the clamp for the RPM signal without having to take all this off and do all this before the dyno because that would have been a major pain. Alright, now see if we can get this rubber hose off of our pairing valve. Well, that was easy. Okay. Now, I think what I'm going to do is go ahead, let's just take everything off the air box here. Okay. Here's the full air box. Set that off to the side. One more rag. Now, there it is a clip on this pairing valve if I can get it undone there okay that is a coil I think what I want to do I don't see any ratings on this 
So I will be right back. I'm going to get my voltmeter and I'm going to ohm the pins out to see how much resistance is on that because I may possibly need to jumper this plug out with a resistor. Just so we don't get any error codes. You may be able to use a straight jumper wire in there and it looks like I can get it up in behind oh yeah I can get it up here behind the charging rectifier and it'll be really easy to get back to if I need to jump it out with something different. Um, I'll be right back. Let me go get my meter. Oh, the truck. All right, I am back. I've got a 2K on my meter. Let's see what we got. 0 0.02. All right, so we got 20 ohms. 20 ohms. Well, being the resourceful guy that I am, I actually have a whole assortment of resistors. There's a 22 ohm. I bet you that's close enough. So I am going to stick a 22 ohm resistor in the plug here. And if the ECU has any kind of feedback, it will still think that it's plugged up. That and electronics are smart nowadays. They know when you unplug something. Even if you don't think it's got a feedback signal, it's looking for resistance. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to give it a little bit of resistance. At that low, you may possibly get by with just a regular jumper wire, but I don't like doing that because I don't like sending full current. If it is looking for feedback to the ECU, the resistor limits the current that can go back through if it's a loop powered device. So if I'm going over anybody's head, just trust me. I know what I'm doing. Okay. Now, like I say, I can get to this very easily. I'm going to pull it down. See how well that plugs in. Oh, that's beautiful. I think I'll just stick this resistor, if you guys can see, just sticking this little resistor between the two pins, just like that. And then I'm going to tape over it so it cannot come out. And of course I probably have to go back out to my truck for my tape. Or into the garage, one of the two. BRB again. Got some good 33 electrical tape. This is the high quality stuff. So I'm going to take one piece and do it perpendicular to the pins and the sister, like such. And then I'll wrap around. Actually, I'm going to do a cross pattern here, the two pieces. Good electrical tape. It's worth its weight in gold, my friends. All right, now, got a little bit of a piece of foam here that the main pump was sitting on. I guess for vibration dampening. Getting that off here. Here's a piece of uh, little foam under the pairing valve. Alright, take the last bolt out here. Wish I had an 8mm socket handy. I think they're out in the garage. And there she is. Now, these two little reeds. This thing here, these need to go back. Okay? That has to go back on. And there's that bad boy. Good heavy duty block off plate here. And 
and all is well. So, should be good. But basically, what you do is you're pulling the air vent out. You're leaving the reed switch with the gasket. The gasket and everything's still in there, and this is just compressing it down. And that's basically it. So, now we're going to put it all back together. And like I say, this is the uh, same thing you'll have to do. Take apart wise if you're going to do spark plugs, change the air filter, anything like that. So be prepared. If you want to do it yourself, you see what you have to take off and go through. But it don't be intimidated. It's not that hard. It's just a lot of little bits and pieces. There's one more step to doing this after I get this tight. I'm going to work back and forth between the two. Now the other part to doing the block off is that one annoying hose that went around and came up to the bottom of the air box. Hmm. One that was attached to right here. That's what this bad boy is for. We're just going to plug it. And they supplied the plug with the kit. This is a driven motorsports kit, by the way. I don't know that I've said what it was. But, yep. I think that is the kit for the Ninja 650. We basically went under the assumption that it would be the same. And, apparently, it's just a little bit different. So... Alright, and the instructions that actually came with this block off plate tells you if you unplug the air pump, you're going to have a fuel injection trouble light come on. So I'm hoping this resistor is going to eliminate that. Man, it's so much cleaner down in there. It looks so much better. And we've got the one hose that was underneath here. and cool thing about these 650s, being the open trellis frame and not all the fairings and crap in the way, um, you can actually get to the bottom pretty easy. It's a little more open on this side, so I'm going to work on getting it from this side. And there she is. Allen is buried under here. Yeah, if the instructions on the uh, block off plate says that if you take the harness off the pump, then yeah, it's definitely looking for some feedback, resistance, something. Now, Ladies and gentlemen, see what we got. Sounds like it primed. Everything looks good. get the plastics back on and we'll call her a day but now I need to get going so thanks for watching guys I hope you learned something like subscribe stay in touch because we'll be doing more stuff like this in the future ride safe